So today we're going to continue to take a look at the alternative future of the world. In the last video, we saw a huge global conflict breakout after the US invaded Canada over disputes in the Northwest Passage, and this actually resulted in a CSTO victory. So if you look at the alliances, the CSTO has expanded greatly. They now control all of Central and South America, most of Africa, and most of Asia. Now before we get into this scenario, I'd like to remind you to please leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. The support is greatly appreciated as we try to reach our goal of 5,000 subscribers for this year. So yeah, let's get started. So we're actually going to start with multiple countries leaving the CSTO. One country is actually going to be this country here, which, which is comprised of Colombia and Peru, as well as Ecuador, after they were all taken over by the CSTO. Another country is actually going to be Niger and the West African Union, who are actually going to reunite. For some reason, they're split up after the war, but they're actually going to reunite. They're actually going to unite as well, both their economies suck after the war. No offense to those countries. And then we're actually going to see Florida leaving, as well as a lot of these other American countries. So there's our final map for the Americas. And then over in Central Asia, we actually have Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, Pakistan, and a lot of the other Central Asian countries deciding to leave the CSTO. Another country that's going to leave is also Mongolia. This causes a lot of anger with Russia, who is actually now going to declare war on all the Central Asian countries. This war is actually going to go much faster than it normally would since all these countries just got out of a war and none of the Central Asian countries are really doing that well and so Russia does quite well against them. They take over Kazakhstan and then go down into Uzbekistan and they all surrender over to Russia. And Russia completely annexes all the countries. So now it might look like that Russia is trying to reform the Soviet Union but well, maybe they are, but they're not really not. There's anger because these countries left their alliance. But now that's going to be it for Russia. Well, yeah, for now. Now, I should say that not a lot's really going to happen in this video, just because everybody just got out of a war. It's mostly going to be a lot of unifications and trying to recover from the war. Speaking of unifications, down south we have... We have Zimbabwe and Mozambique united together as just before the global conflict in the last video. They both fought a war against South Africa. Well, actually, Zimbabwe is on the same side. They fought against Mozambique. But they don't care. They're going to be in an alliance. And Maui is actually going to join this alliance too as they're also in that war. I don't really know why. But, yeah, they're in an alliance now. And if we look back at the alliance map, another country is going to be leaving the CSTO. And that's going to be Nigeria. They they really only joined the war to expand their territory. They didn't, they didn't really want to stay in the CSTO. They're still CSTO leaning, but they're not in the alliance anymore. Another country leaving is actually going to be Algeria. And this actually leads to Morocco and Iberia leaving. This angers Russia, who wants to keep an influence over Europe. But for now, these countries will be staying neutral. And we actually have a country leaving the WDO. And that is going to be the East African Federation as they really want to pursue neutrality and they have a lot of CSTO members on their borders and they don't want to be invaded again and they actually have another country joining their union and that's going to be the Republic of the Congo. Now unionization is actually becoming quite popular in the world as countries try to pursue neutrality Eritrea uniting with Sudan. These two countries have been huge allies in this series and then and Djibouti also gets in on this union as somehow they're still around. They probably would have been taken over a while ago by now. Another union taking place is over here in what used to be northern Mexico and the southern US, where a lot of these countries are now going to be united together into, well, one country. Back on the alliance map again, we actually see Baja California leaving the CSDO. This was probably a really bad idea, as not long after we see California declaring war on Baja California. This war doesn't go well for Baja California, as the other California just absolutely destroys their country. And in the peace treaty, Baja California is completely annexed by California, who is actually quite powerful in this alternate timeline. Another unification that's taking place is between Guatemala and Belize. And then back on the alliance map, we actually see that this Caribbean nation down here is actually going to leave the CSTO and pursue neutrality. Another former US state is power hungry, and that state is actually going to be Florida. With that, they declare war on the Bahamas, as well as this Caribbean nation here. The reason I just say Caribbean nation is because this is kind of unification between three different countries, and so it doesn't really have a name. So if you hear me just saying Caribbean nation or 
West African nation or things like that, then yeah, that's what I mean. Now these nations really aren't that strong and Florida completely takes them over. And in the peace treaty, Florida completely annexes all the countries. Another country leaving the CSTO is going to be Hawaii. We actually see Bangladesh joining on, on the Himalayan Pact, which is what I'm going to be calling the Purple Alliance from now on. Now we're going to be having one final war in this video, and that is actually going to be China declaring war on Myanmar. So after the World War III, China expanded greatly as they annexed Taiwan, Vietnam, and the Philippines. But I guess they're still hungry, as now they invade into Myanmar. They push in from the north, and continue to push into the south. At this point, China actually declares war on Thailand and Mongolia. So right away, China pushes into Thailand, pushing it from all along their borders. They also make a push into Inner Mongolia, which they used to control. But after the collapse of China a few videos ago, it was ceded back to Mongolia. We now actually see Russia and Manchuria joining this war, as they want to get some land out of Mongolia for themselves. So right away, Mo Russian and Manchurian troops begin to enter into Mongolia, and they, and they begin to sweep through the country. China claims the rest of it, and they now have this straight line. They aren't going to go to war against each other, however, as, well, they're all in the same alliance. Eventually, China has taken out almost all of Myanmar, and almost all of Thailand, and the two countries surrender. So now we can take a look at the last peace treaty for this video. Okay, and so in this peace treaty, we see that China has fully annexed Myanmar and Thailand, and they begin to form kind of an empire. They also take back all of Inner Mongolia, and the rest of Mongolia is split between Russia and Manchuria. Now, that's actually going to be it for today's video. So if you did enjoy this video, please feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. All the support is greatly appreciated as we try to get to our goal of 5,000 subscribers by the end of this year. I know this is a shorter video, but again, there's not really much to happen after the World War. And so yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.